Here are four representative questions involving multiplying expressions that have radicals in them. So the first one is a review of something we've already done. Multiplying two monomials, if they have equal indices, indices is the plural of index, so they're both square roots. So I can go ahead and put everybody under the same radical and just multiply the radicands together. So 5x cubed times 10x squared is 50x to the fourth. But now, since we've done our simplifying, we're going to go ahead and break that up into its perfect square factors and its leftover factors so that we can write it in its simplest form. So 50, a perfect square that goes into 50 is 25. Its leftover factor would be 2. 2 times 25 is 50. x to the fourth. The perfect square factor is the, since the 4 is an even number and my index is 2, the index goes evenly into the power of the variable. That means the entire thing is a perfect square in this case, so it goes into the first bin, nothing left over. Now we simplify that first radical. So the square root of 25 is 5, the square root of x to the 4 is x squared, and the square root of 2 tags along. Another common one is when you multiply two binomials where you have some radicals in there. In this case, I've made them the same so that we can see what happens that's nice. So whenever we multiply binomials, right, we often use that FOIL. So square root of 3x times 5, that's just 5 times the square root of 3x. Square root of 3x times square root of 3x, that's going to be just 3x with a negative sign because one of them was negative. So minus 10, both positive. Last, 2 times that square root of 3x is going to be 2 squared to 3x, and it will be negative. Okay. Everybody's under that radical. Now, as there looks like there's some tidying to do. I have a 5 square root of 3x minus 2 square roots of 3x, so that'll be 3 square roots of 3x. This minus 3x that doesn't have a radical, that just stays. It is not like that one. This one has a radical, this one doesn't, and then plus 10. No more simplifying to be done. Something fun happens when you multiply two conjugates. So conjugates where you have exactly the same terms, but the sign in the middle is different. So we'll go ahead, binomials again. So think FOIL. 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times square root of x, positive. So plus 5 square roots of x. Then I have 5 times the opposite of the square root of x. So that's going to be minus 5 square root of x. And then our last is square root of x times square root of x. That's just x, and it's going to be minus. So look at those two terms in the middle. One's positive, one's negative. Those guys add away. And that whole thing simplifies to 25 minus x. Last example, when you have a binomial squared, a couple ways you can go about it. There is a pattern. It's taught in beginning algebra. So if you know that pattern, if you remember it, you can follow it. If you don't remember it, you need to write out the two binomials and do the FOIL. Otherwise, students tend to forget the middle term that's involved. It's when you multiply conjugates that your result only has two terms. If the binomials are exactly the same, including the sign in the middle, your result should have three terms. So here we go. 9 plus 3b square root b plus 3 square root b. And then my last term is square root b times square root b. That's just a b. Tidy up the 2 in the middle, and I'll have a 9 plus 6 square root b plus b. That's my 6, and that's the b.